From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time. Transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now on the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of the American family Robinson. Born and raised in the heart of New York's teeming Manhattan, George Robinson had always rebelled against the confinement of city life. He wanted to be able to see the open sky at night. Feel the earth beneath his feet, find adventure, thrill to the excitement of travel. But marriage and a couple of youngsters had managed to clip his wings. And it was 20 years before George Robinson managed to travel at all. When he did, he found scant satisfaction. No kidding, pal. I'm exhausted. Taking that subway every night is plain murder. Maybe we made a mistake moving to Jersey. Mm. You want spaghetti tonight and macaroni tomorrow night or macaroni tonight and spaghetti tomorrow night? Hey, couldn't we have a steak or some chops one night? I wake pretty darn hard and I'm getting We can't sick. say for that trip we're going to take someday if we put every cent you earn in our stomachs. Yeah, yeah, I know. But no matter what we do, we never seem to be able to save enough to go anyplace really exciting. Two weeks vacation in Atlantic City once a year. The kids don't mind, George. I don't mind. You don't. Well, I do. A guy has to have some incentive to keep him working from nine to five, six days a week. Summer, winter, spring, fall. Whether he's feeling good or bad, taking a crowded subway. I know I... it's no fun working as hard as you do. I feel the same way. Being cook, laundress, chambermaid, and waitress for a family of four isn't any picnic. Oh, sometimes I think that if I have to face another fried egg before I'm half awake in the morning or wash another load of clothes, I'll scream. <laughs> What in the thunder is that? It's only Billy. This week he's Tarzan. Wouldn't you think somebody could invent a nice, quiet hero? Bang! 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 bang. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> Hiya, Billy. You shooting strangers or friends? Bad Arabs. Huh? They came into the jungle to steal ivory, but I killed them. I'm Tarzan. <laughs> Shouldn't you be using a bow and arrow? Ah, they don't make enough noise. You see, George? Well, then, uh, how about swinging into the upper level and calling your sister for dinner, Tarzan? She can hear me upstairs from here. Hey, Marion! Screaming is terribly uncouth, Billy. Besides, I was only in the living room. Well, I thought you were... And furthermore, I told you to call me Marilyn. That's my name now. Since when? Since somebody told her she looked like Marilyn Monroe. Oh, don't be funny. It's just that I, I think the name is... Prettier? Marion. Well, uh, does uh, Tom think it's prettier? Tom. I don't care what he thinks. I don't care if I never see him again. Well, I'd like to get as far away from New Jersey as I could. India or, or Africa, even. Who we are in India. Africa's the place. Well, it's time I got dinner started. Hey, uh, just a minute, Twill. Yeah? No, 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 look. Now, now, don't jump off the handle when I suggest this, because it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. You see, we do have some money in the bank, and if we book passage on a freighter, we'd still have enough left to buy supplies. And once we got there, I could shoot enough game to provide food. You've seen that sharpshooter's medal I got in the ROTC in high school, and well, the... Well, what do you think, Pearl? The whole idea sounds sensational. What are you talking about? Gosh, I thought you knew. I'm suggesting that we move to Africa. Golly! Double golly in spades. Uh, but think of it for a minute, Paul. A tract as big as Van Cortland Park, where we could raise vegetables and pick wild fruit right off the trees. Why, we dress in animal hides and sleep on pelts and smooth boughs. Oh, no more dishwashing or laundry or bed-making, Paul. Mm. Africa. Where men are men, and... And women wear rings through their noses. Look, I'm serious. More serious than I've ever been in my whole life. You know, I'm not getting any younger. 
and this may be my last chance to escape the life sentence of nine to five drudgery. It could be your last chance to escape drudgery, too, Pearl. Well, I'd go to Timbuktu to get away from the pile of mending I've accumulated in my fishing basket, but Timbuktu I... happens to be in Africa, so I'll put you down for an I vote. Everyone would say we'd be out of our minds. Well, we care what people say. What do you say, Marion? Uh, 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 Marilyn? Well, it suits me. Maybe when I'm a billion miles away, Tom will realize what we might have met to each other. Well, Billy, we wouldn't take such a step without a unanimous vote, so it's up to you. What do you say, boy? surplus store. I outfit a lot of campers, and I guess camping out just about the same in the Congo as it is in the Carolinas. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is in a way. Now, um, now how about this here uh, stove, Poyle? Uh, what do you think? If I never see a stove again the rest of my life, I won't complain. Yeah, I guess I could always build one out of stone or something when we settle down for good. You figuring on going to Africa for good, Mr. Robinson? That's right. We're the, uh, <laughs> the American family Robin. <laughs> Or, you know, like the Swiss family Robinson that got uh, shipwrecked on a desert isle. Yeah, maybe you better buy one of these here life rafts. What we need is food, just in case the jungle animals haven't heard about Georgia's sharpshooting metal. Yeah, sure, you, you ought to take along a few cartons of these baked beans, a real bargain. Yeah, beans are always good to have on a camping trip. And according to that article we read about prices in Africa, it wouldn't hurt to take a few bargains along. Uh, Boyle, do you think that that Tarzan Billy keeps talking about is real or, or only in books and things? Well, so far as I know, he's only a fictional character. Why? Well, I was figuring maybe we ought to buy some glass beads and stuff like that for him, uh, just in case he does exist and we need his help. <laughs> Though it isn't at all likely. <laughs> yeah, you said it, Mr. Robinson. All that stuff about dangerous animals and savages and that voodoo business, that's nothing but pure hokum to make movies about, put on the radio. <laughs> Yeah, you'd be as safe in the Congo as you are in New Jersey. Yes, sir. Wanna Tarzan? Wanna Tarzan? I need the other knee. Barua Koa, Wanna Tarzan. Have a letter for me? Are you sure? The deal, Wanna Tarzan. Barua is for you. I told no one I was coming to this section of the Congo. Runner take Barua from Liagu to Bekarata. From Bekarata, carried by safari to Tarzan Siko's cabin. He not there, so other runner take to Punya village. Man of Punya give Barua to chief of Giora tribe. He handle Tengiki. Tengiki find Tarzan. <laughs> I'm glad it was as simple as all that. How it ever reached me in one week, I'll never know. All who have Barua say is much important to reach Lord of Jungle. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I shall expect you to know how you dislike me. For my sake. What Barua say? Oh, it's from Captain Lawrence, who should know better than to ask me to play a nursemaid to a group of babes in the woods. Babes? Uh, babies, uh, like Kitata. The Toto's coming to jungle? Oh, these are grown-up ones, uh, Tengiki. A man, his Maki, and his two children. Two children? Yeah, well, now, well, really, neither of them infants, but as ignorant of the jungle as though they were in swaddling clothes. And their parents, too. And Captain Lawrence delayed their departure from Liago as long as he could, but they've left there by this time, and he expects me to see that no harm comes to them. Tarzan angry. He not do, yes? I have never yet refused Captain Lawrence any request, nor have I ever knowingly permitted the innocent people to come to harm in the jungle. I shall not do so this time. But on this occasion, I shall handle things a little differently than I've done in the past. By the beginning of the following week, George Robinson and his family had covered many weary miles of jungle belt. It was a thrilling experience for all of them. And though no Ascari or gun bearers accompanied them, they were without fear. 
They did have two bearers, and George marched bravely ahead, brandishing his rifle as he'd once seen Clyde Beatty do in a jungle picture. Behind him came the bearers, carrying a tent, numerous cases of baked beans, and a miscellany of other supplies. In their wake trod Pearl and Marion, and Billy brought up the rear, enthusiastically taking pot shots at cannibals with his cap pistol. Boss! Boss, you guys! Oh, 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 okay! We wait here, Bonner. Boss! That's Swahili. Yeah, sure, Swahili or something like that. But they understand English. Yeah, I know, but this lets them know that I'm an old-timer that can't be taken in by any of their tricks. <laughs> They've been trying to tell me they're supposed to get a dollar a day, but I know to go and rate six cents. <laughs> I read it in a book. What year was the book published, George? Bang, 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 bang! I just shot another cannibal. Oh, Mother, make him stop saying things like that. Stop saying things like that, Billy. Well, you uh, enjoying our little hike, Marion? Oh, yes, yeah, sure I am, Dad. It's only that when I used to go on Girl Scout hikes, we, we, we could always stop for a soda or something. Gee, I'm so thirsty, I could... <laughs> it's only a coconut, Marion. <laughs> it just missed me. Guess a monkey must have thrown it down. Yeah, it, it sounds, sounds as though it's got milk in it. <laughs> Your order for a drink was fulfilled pretty quickly, I'd say, Marion. Uh, I'll smash it against this rock over here, and then I'll... Oh! What happened? What's oh, the matter, George? Oh, 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 I was just leaning over to smash the coconut on that rock when something stung me hard. George! Huh? George, don't move! On that rock! A snake! Yeah, well, oh, 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 sure. I, I, I saw it all the time. A uh, perfectly uh, harmless variety. But uh, maybe we better get moving, huh? We can we can have the coconut later. <laughs> Never good to, to drink on an empty stomach. Tengiki, not think Kitotos keep walk so many days. Seems as though we've been dogging their footsteps for years. It's most difficult to travel so slowly. I like to swing rapidly through the trees. Uh, Nadio, Tarzan is Manu. I may have been raised by apes, and I may throw a coconut like a monkey, but that doesn't make me one. Tarzan almost hit girl with coconut. Now you needn't try to lord it over me just because you scored a bullseye with your blowgun. Matu yell much loud, yes, Tarzan? <laughs> much loud. He was lucky it was a small pebble instead of a dart. We keep following them, Tarzan? Long they keep going? Early this morning, I crept close to their campfire. They were discussing how much further they should go. What they see? Well, their father's looking for a nice, wide clearing in the heart of the jungle, one where he can plant crops without bothering to cut down any trees. His wife wants to keep going till they find a ready-made home, perhaps a, a cave with steam heat. The girl would like to continue until they stumble across a jungle ice cream parlor. And small boy... He's got his heart set on capturing a tiger. And since there are no tigers in Africa, we may have to continue following them until they reach India. And I say we're lost, George Robinson. Ah, be reasonable, Pearl. How can we be lost when we wasn't going any particular place? If those bearers hadn't left us, maybe we would be going to some particular place. Yeah, they was very unreasonable, too. Yeah, they wanted to get paid. And you would have had enough money to keep them on if you hadn't squandered that $120 for a hunting license. Squandered? I had to have it so as I could shoot game. We had to have meat for our journey, didn't we? What meat, Dad? We haven't had anything but, but beans so far. Well, I just thought I'd better wait until we made a permanent camp before I did any serious hunting. If you ask me, you were taken for that $120, George. I bet they don't get $120 from everybody. Not with animals as plentiful as they are here. Uh, Why, there must be a lion or a panther behind practically every tree. I, I wish you wouldn't say things like that, Mother. You know... It's a funny thing. We keep hearing animals far away at first and then closer. But just when it sounds like they're going to attack us, we don't hear them anymore. Must be your father's sharpshooter's metal that's frightening them away. Uh, are we going to stand here the rest of the day or are we going to push on? Oh, let's push on by all means. Billy, see if you can help your father with that buck shot or whatever he calls it. Buck board, and it's a lucky thing I'm clever with my hands. If I hadn't rigged this up, we never would have carried the supplies this farther. 
Now, come on, mush. I could use a little mush as a change after all those beans. Hey, Mom! Ah, look, there's a thatched hut over there, just behind those trees. A brand new one that looks empty. Oh, can you imagine anyone putting up a house around here? I wouldn't go inside if I was you, Billy. Uh, you never can tell what you like. Hey, there's no one in here. Come on, George. I guess if Billy can brave it, we can go inside. Oh, sure. I, I only meant to... Oh, uh... well, it's real nice. Separate rooms and everything. Let's see, I could make a kitchen back there... Well, not that I intend to do much cooking, but now, I... Now, just a minute, Poyle. Somebody must have built this house for somebody. Let's just say that Providence provided it for us. Yeah, but we just can't appropriate it. The real owners might be moving in any day now. It uh, might still be an escrow or something. I don't care what it's in. I'm not budging another step. Well... Hey, Mom, there's, there's a river right near here. If I slip into my bathing suit, will you wash my clothes while I go in swimming? Everything else I own's in shreds. Mine, too. How am I patching my denims, Mom? And if you get time, Poyle, see if you can fix up some sort of beds while I start collecting a little firewood. The Totos move into Hema, yes, Tarzan? Yes, the one that Providence provided... I'd say that young man feels very much at home the way he's swinging on that door. It's a good thing we build Hema much strong. Tarzan, what girl do in strange costume of native woman? Well, that's a bathing suit. And the little fool's going in swimming with a dozen crocodiles to keep her company. I'd better go... Get back in a little while, man. I don't worry. My two head for jungle near where is wild boshwark. i better follow him, then. You go down to the river and... Oh, now the boy's wandering off. And wife women start pick poison berries from bush. Tengiki, there ought to be six of us to keep the Robinson family alive. Just through one day. <laughs> Tengiki, waving his arms ferociously and screaming like a banshee, leaped from the bush near Billy, who streaked for home. And while Pearl Robinson turned away from her berry picking to comfort her small son, Tarzan wrenched the poisonous bush from its roots. By this time, Tengiki had reached the river. Spanking the water with a large stick, he flushed out the half-submerged crocodiles, who opened their cavernous mouths to sound an involuntary warning to the frightened Marion. Meanwhile, Tarzan sped through the upper level until he was within sight of George Robinson, who walked blindly toward the alerted Boshwark. The wild bush pig rushed toward him. Not until the advancing dreadnought was within a few yards of him did George finally realize his peril. Nothing's the matter. I just wanted to show you the wild boar I shot. <laughs> the family breadwinner has fulfilled his promise to provide meat for his wife and children. <laughs> About 170 pounds of it is a rough guess. Oh, well, I wouldn't eat any of that fiendish-looking monster. Oh, well, it so happens, young lady, that wild pig is a great delicacy. <laughs> and now we can have pork with our beans. Billy, will you leave that thing alone? Okay, Dad, I give in. But if it's all the same to you, I'll skip the beans for a few meals and go whole hog. <laughs> That's my girl. Dad? Yes, son? Uh, did you want to hear how I bagged this animal? Dad, if you shot that animal, then how come there are no bullet holes in it and it only an arrow sticking out of its back? <laughs> Wake up, Tengiki. Oh. Come on, it's morning. Oh, he, Tengiki, much tired. Tarzan and Tengiki not have enough sleep last few weeks. Yes, it's been almost a 24-hour-a-day job. And we have a new assignment this morning, more trouble. Which one this time? All of them. 
They've discovered that the village of the Hartusi tribe is not too far from here, and they're busy packing up a lot of glass, jewelry, and junk in anticipation of a visit there. Hartusi tribe, much bad people, yes? Yes. I shall have to accompany them on their little outing. Without being seen, of course. But I'd like you to go ahead and warn the Hartusi chief that Tarzan shall hold him responsible for any harm that comes to these people. Uh, then uh, remain there and mingle with the crowd that greets their arrival. Stay close to them, Tengiki. They are Kitotos, but nice ones. On the meat. Oh, what do you want? One You speak English? Oh, George, you don't have to talk to them that way. That's the only sort of thing they understand. See? One of them's coming towards us. Me speak English. Not others. Oh, well, uh, can you make them understand about these jewels we brought? Just hold beads out in hand. Oh, all right. Uh, here, here. Jenga, probably some sort of an honorary title. Just like home, every time you went in to see the boss, he used to give you a new title instead of an increase. Yeah. I don't see the natives offering us any presents in return for ours, like the book said. Well, they probably think it would be an insult. They, they, they think that I'm some sort of a white god. Well, great white father, I think we better collect our family and start home. I've got to make some dishes out of that clay that Billy found before it gets all dried up. Yeah, and I'll give you a hand after I finish digging up that tree stump. Boy, I worked until midnight last night, but no soap. Those roots must go clear to China. Billy! Marion! We're ready to go, and we'll be lucky if we get home by dinner time. I, I hate to mention it, Poyle, but do you suppose there's anything you could do to that ham to make it edible? I've done everything but embalm it. But we won't starve to death for another few weeks unless the can opener gives up the ghost. <laughs> Geeky, I don't like the way those Hartusi warriors are hanging around, peering into the shack. I'm going to try to find out what they want, and then go in and have a little talk with the Robinsons. Why Tarzan put brown dye on face and body? Because I'm not going to be Tarzan. As a native, I can deliver a threatening ultimatum. Lend me a few of your tribal ornaments, will you, Tengiki? No deal. <laughs> No one would ever recognize me this way. Hey, Mom. Look, it's Tarzan. How, how did you know my name? How did you recognize me? Gosh, everybody knows about you. But why have you got all that dark stuff smeared all over you for? Billy, it's not nice to ask personal questions. Come on in, Mr. Tarzan. Oh, sure. Make yourself at home. <laughs> Hey, this is a real honor. <laughs> you make it difficult for me to tell you why I came to advise you to leave the jungle where you do not belong and where you're worse than helpless. Huh? Why, well, we've been doing all right. We found some strong grass for weaving. We located good drinking water. And the natives in the village near here like me just fine. Huh? Why, well, they call me Majinga. I do not mean to be unkind, but... Majinga means ignoramus. The weaving fiber was placed on your doorstep, and I laid the trail to the drinking water so that not even an infant could have missed it. Yeah, I guess I must have known all along somebody was looking out for us. And frankly, I'm, I'm ready to light out of here. I complained about waking from 9 to 5 back home, but here I wake 18 hours a day just to keep alive, and I don't even get paid for it. And I have to make dishes out of clay instead of just washing them, and weave cloth and make clothes instead of just having to launder them, not to mention everything else I have to do, without any of those blessed conveniences I had back in New Jersey. And I know now that I want to go back to Tom. And you, Billy? Gosh, guy can't do anything here without getting half scared to death. Not like listening to the jungle on the radio. I'm ready for home. Yeah, but there's only one rub. We ain't got any money left to get home on. <laughs> oh, but you do have a mountainous pile of empty bean cans stored in your kitchen. Oh, well, there wasn't any rubbish barrel, and I didn't know what to do with them. But 
Well, what's that got to do with... The savages laughed at you when you gave them worthless pieces of glass when they possess many precious jewels. But they've been peering in here, admiring the shiny metal tins from which they can fashion many useful instruments and utensils. They're willing to trade this for the empty cans. Uh, a diamond? Golly Moses! Gee, even the movie stars don't have diamonds that deep. Come on, let's get packed. we got to get going. A native friend of mine will escort you back to Liago, and Captain Lawrence there will help you with the sale of the diamond. I'm happy you've decided to return home for good. For good? Are you kidding? I'm going back and buying up every case of baked beans in New Jersey. Transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. And this is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle. Charles Arlington speaking. <laughs> <laughs>